Phil from My Fine Homestead, and today what we're doing is we're setting up these 55 gallon drums, mounting them in the back of the Kubota in order to start collecting sap. Uh, yesterday in Maple Syrup video part one, we, Aiden and I, were out setting the tap or the big totes up to start collecting the sap. Well, once it's in those totes, we need to bring it back here to the farm to start boiling down. So what we need to do is we have a pump and I can show you all that stuff a little bit later, but these are the barrels that we will pump out of the 250 gallon totes. We'll pump them into these 55 gallon barrels and then we can take it up and then pump it onto the truck to bring it home. So what you gotta do to get started is open up all the barrels. These have all been uh, triple rinsed already from the factory that I get them from. So we go ahead and open them all up. And once we get them open, since they're already clean, I don't want to get a bunch of stuff in there. So I have a three quarter inch bit and we need to go ahead and just drill these out like that. We'll do that to all of them. You want to kind of have it right in the middle so you don't uh, mess up the thread. You want to be careful you don't catch your hand underneath it either as it goes through. Kind of clean these up a little bit, but I got to do that to all of them. I got it all together. I still need to strap these down so this can't move. But how this is going to work is this is the hose that I connect to my uh, totes. So this is a two inch cam lock. There's a two inch valve on the bottom of all the totes that this screws onto. And then I just put my cam lock on it like that and turn it on. Uh, the pump will then, this is actually set up the opposite way right now. This is for onloading. So in order to put them on, I need to take these off and move them. This is the inlet, this is the outlet. So right now with this on top, it's gonna pump them into these barrels. This is the inlet, which is gonna be coming from my totes. So this will suck the sap out of the totes. So this will go down, I'll attach this to one, the motor will be running, the pump, and it will pump the sap out of the totes, into the pump, and then into these barrels. Once these are full, like I was saying before, these will fill up evenly, and then once they get full, they'll start pumping into this one up here. That way, um, last year we tried it with a 250 gallon tote in the back, but when you get a 250 gallon tote full, it is extremely heavy, which is almost too heavy for the Kubota. Um, but also, if you only fill it half full, it sloshes around in there, and it, it's really uh, hard to drive with it slashing, sloshing around. So what I did this year is we're doing the 255s, which if I only have 100 gallons, it'll just fill these two up and it won't even fill this one up. Um, and then once I do get these filled up, I can fill up the other 50 and then it won't be quite sloshing around as much when they're full. So I ended up buying one of these. I'm going to 
mount this somewhere so I can end up wrapping my hose up on it. Um, if I don't end up doing that, then I'll just go in the back. This hose that I use is a 7 16 inch silicone hose. It's uh, like for uh, uh, milking, milk hose. Um, I get it from parts department it's called. Uh, go to their website. They have the best uh, prices on silicone hose. The reason I use silicone instead of plastic is even when it's cold, you can still bend it. Now if this was like a vinyl hose, once it gets cold, like when I'm pumping sap, it'd be really hard to bend this. But even now, it's kind of cold today, and you can roll this right up into a ball, and it doesn't hurt it at all. It also is really easy to clean, uh, so you could just take it, throw it in there, kind of fold it all up, and then you're ready to go to your next spot. So uh, that's how we're going to be collecting sap this year. Once we get out in the woods, we'll show you exactly how all this works. Um, I kind of went through how the hookups and everything are different or kind of fast. But once we're doing it, uh, it'll be a lot easier to show you what I meant by switching the inlet and outlet in order to take it out of these and put them into another toad or taking out of the toad and putting into these. Um, I'll explain all that later uh, once we get doing it. And thanks for watching. So now we're going to go out and uh, flush some of the lines. So I need to get some water out there. So all I did, take a garden hose, hook it up to a cam lock. Go ahead, put the cam lock on there. Turn the valve on, and then just go turn the water on. So now what it's doing, is it's just running water into each one of these barrels. This will be the same thing as what the pump is going to be doing. Um, and what I'm just checking now for also any leaks. We want to take care of them now before we start putting sap in. Water's not too bad in the back of the Kubota, um, but you don't want to get sap in there because it does get real sticky. Like I said before, you need to make sure that you have your vent open up top, and that's what this is. You can feel the air kind of coming out of here now. Like if I shut that for just a little while, so you'll be able to hear when I let this go of all the air that's going to come out of there. Well, I guess you didn't hear it. I could hear it. I don't know if you could hear it there. But what it does is it builds up pressure. As these fill up with water, the air has to go somewhere. So that's what this one's for. This is just a vent on the top. I got a long hose on it that I can set off to one side. That way, if I'm not paying attention in the woods and it would happen to overflow, it's gonna start spraying out the side instead of going up in the air. Um, and yes, I have had that happen before. <laughs> so, well, it takes a lot longer to fill these uh, totes with the water hose because um, like our well pressure here is only about 10 gallons a minute where with this pump here I can pump close to I believe this is rated at like 60 gallons a minute so it doesn't take very long to empty a tote or fill a tote with these Thank you. 
right. So I kind of move it away, move it out a little bit. And I just kind of have this at an idle. actually coming out most of these you can see it kind of shooting up those are the caps that we're going to end up putting the caps into I don't know if that means that it could be plugged that it's creating so much pressure up here but you can see all the way down you'll start seeing them come out you'll start seeing them come out all the way down Now it should just go ahead and siphon all the way out now. It should go all the way down to the bottom. This line here should now be clean and ready to start putting taps in. So this line goes almost to where we were just at, where we, where we spliced in. So now we have to go all the way up on the top of the hill where the other line that we came down and tapped into this, where that one starts. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll move this in, and we'll head up to the top of the hill and go ahead and do the same thing up there. Once we get tapping, we're not gonna have all this extra stuff with us. I won't have to unload it every single time. I might actually take this up front. Uh, maybe I won't take this up front. Maybe we'll just wedge it in here. I'm Bill from My Fine Homestead. Thank you for watching part two of Maple Syrup Season.